Over 20 countries have now signed a pledge to triple their nuclear power by 2050. That's up from an original plan to simply double the investment. Uranium Energy Corp, currently the world's fastest growing uranium company, has already positioned itself to meet that increase in global demand. UEC says its mines have a lower environmental footprint, low carbon intensity and reduced impact on biodiversity. I sat down here at COP28 in Dubai to talk with CEO Amir Adnani about his vision for the future of clean energy. Even in two years, you can see the difference. Glasgow was 40,000 delegates. This is 100,000. Things have really built up, even in two years, haven't they? They really have. Think about nuclear energy going from the curbside to the center of the energy transition pavilion with a physical presence here, in addition to the pledge that we saw. That's historic, yeah. like we have never seen before. Stands like this. this is not alone. This is just one of many stands here, isn't it? Absolutely. And this idea of 24-7 clean net zero nuclear, that the only practical solution to meet the world's growing energy demands is reliance and growing dependence on emission-free nuclear. That realization is finally being registered and pledged towards. And it's you know, instead of calling it COP28, maybe we should call it Nuclear COP. You're just in a very good mood, I can tell. <laughs> Why don't we go pick this up in the studio Let's and see how that. we get on. Amir, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Andrew. This is quite big news, isn't it, coming from uh, COP28 already, this tripling of this pledge for nuclear power. Why do you think that's happening now? Andrew, it's a historic piece of news for nuclear energy. Uh, it's coming now because there are megatrends, global megatrends of electrification and really decarbonization that are driving the need for us to meet on one end the growing demand for energy, but in a sustainable, low cost and carbon free manner. Uh, and when we think about the net zero pledges that are also being made and have been made, and when we look to the science community, when we talk to climate scientists, there it simply is a consensus that has now been reached that we cannot reach our climate goals by 2050 and beyond unless nuclear energy plays a pivotal and central role in the future moving forward. And today and over the last 48 hours, we finally have witnessed these pledge, pledges that we're talking about over 20 countries have now pledged to a tripling of nuclear energy. And I have to tell you, Andrew, I mean, if we look back for a bit of perspective here, previous COPs, nuclear energy was perhaps not in the blue zone or the green zone. It was in the taxi zone. It was out on, outside on the curbs. And so this might as well be called nuclear COP as opposed to COP28 because it's just phenomenal to see the historic acceptance and the pledges that absolutely confirm that this is a growth industry and it's gonna play an absolutely crucial role for meeting net zero targets and growing energy needs. What about this MOU that you've signed with Bill Gates' SMR company? What's all that about? It really is about two other important trends, uh, energy security and security of supply chains, uh, and also really the fast growing, exciting market for small and advanced reactors. Uh, which Terra Power is one of the leading companies in that sector. And so when we think about the fact that nuclear energy simply isn't about the technology itself, but it's about the fuel, uh, the uranium fuel that needs to power existing and new reactors, we have to really examine uh, these very vital supply chains. Uh, and so both ourselves and uh, Terra Power have made significant commitments to the nuclear fuel industry and SMR technology for Terra Power in the U.S., uh, we're a Wyoming, uh, we have operations in Wyoming, which is also where Terra Power's first reactor is going to be built. And so for our company to be able to really partner up with uh, Bill Gates's organization to commit to a domestic nuclear fuel cycle that can ensure these new exciting SMRs that are going to power data centers and energy complexes and, and beyond. This is why we're seeing these commitments to SMRs coming from the Microsofts of the world the new industrial demand on uh, these SMRs from industries like artificial intelligence, uh, which is going to reshape the energy landscape. This is the reason why uh, we're making a very strong commitment to the SMR sector, partnering up with Bill Gates's company. 
Uh, and, and look, it needs to be fueled domestically as well, because we simply can't rely on our energy needs to always be exported. Yes, it's a global market, but sometimes you need to have visibility on what your energy needs are by looking out the window and knowing your own backyard that you have that security of supply. Okay, let's go back to the basics. You're a mining company, plain and simple in that respect. Yes. Mining has a history. It's problematic as far as the environment's concerned. How do you meet those challenges in 2023 and beyond? I think any industry has uh, improved over many decades that it's been around. Mining is one of the oldest industries in the world. Uh, we were mining copper as human civilizations going back thousands of years ago. Mining today has also, like many other industries, uh, significantly improved and advanced to basically adopt best practices that can really achieve sustainability. Our company is a great example of that. Uh, we have uh, really been leading the way in the global uranium industry to demonstrate that uranium mines can be net zero. So to really have a low carbon footprint to make sure the fuel you're providing for emission-free electricity is also emission-free itself. Have a small footprint using a very disruptive low-cost technology called in-situ recovery. Uh, and to really make sure that the uh, commitment that we make to landowners, stakeholders, provincial, state government, federal government, all of that comes together. Our business is 18 years old. And in these 18 years, we've seen and done it all. Restore uranium mines, build new uranium mines. But today we're really proud of, again, the growth that stems from the conviction we've had as a company that has seen for a long time the trends emerging to get to this point where the world is gonna, again, grow with nuclear energy and hence need growing uranium supplies. Hence why we've committed to this. We're the fastest growing uranium company in the world uh, with assets in US and Canada. Uh, seven fully permitted projects that really shows the support from local communities, state and federal government. Uh, and committed to really be here as a long-term reliable supplier of this essential fuel for achieving net zero goals. I mean, the COP conferences in themselves are United Nations assemblies of a sort. So there's tension within there. There always has been, and presumably there always will be. And at the moment, the tensions are to do with conflict in Ukraine, conflict in the Middle East. And that affects all the other priorities that delegates bring to the table each time they meet. Where does energy fit into that? Um, I think when we look at um, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and when we see the central role that Russia plays in the global energy markets, we do come to some uh, hard and black and white realizations that as much as energy is a global business, as much as we're all here looking for global solutions to global problems, we do need to have local redundancy. Uh, and that's important. Uh, and I think what uh, we're seeing as an important issue here is really again about national security and security of supply. It's not just about uh, energy, but it's about also the key commodities that we're gonna need to achieve the energy transition. It's not just uranium, it's lithium, it's cobalt, it's nickel, it, these key elements that are gonna shape the next 100 years. Just like oil shaped the last 100 years and has continued to play a very vital role. So I think the reality is that we, uh, we need to accept the fact that local competency and capabilities need to be developed in those vital supply chains. And this is exactly what we're getting at with uh, our company, Uranium Energy Corp in the US, where in the US market alone, the US led the way yesterday with the pledge to triple nuclear energy. And in the US, one in every five home is powered by nuclear energy. Right now, this is before the tripling. But 60% of uranium imports are coming from uh, well, Russia and other countries close to Russia. But at the end of the day, demand that is there locally, the so, lo, so local supply source is less than 1% of what that demand is. This is a very profound setup that needs to be addressed. And that's why we've positioned our company really with North American assets that can be a true answer to providing those local supply chains. Sometimes people say these cataclysmic events bring about a kind of change. They, they, they bring a reset with them. Do you think we're at, on the energy front, do you think we're at a turning point here? Like I mentioned before, I, it would be an understatement to say we're at a turning point. It is, uh, again, so profound. 
to see, uh, particularly, I mean, today there was a pledge as well on renewable energy. Uh, but again, the tripling of nuclear energy pledge that we spoke about already um, is, is truly profound, never seen before. Uh, and uh, I'd be interested to see how the supply side of this response, right? Because here we have the demand side for uranium, which is nuclear energy, pledging to triple. Uh, and the global industry now on the supply side has to really think about that. Uh, and to really try to respond to that. So I think this, uh, this is a very consequential uh, COP. Uh, and I think, again, the, the, the key events that we've talked about there with nuclear energy really are going to reshape the energy discussion uh, moving forward. And over 20 countries pledging uh, is, uh, is wonderful to the tripling of nuclear power. Amir Adnani, thanks very much indeed. Nice to see you. Likewise, thank you.